Narcissists wear different masks of normalcy to fool people. They're masters at manipulating everyone because they have been repeating the same thing again and again for decades. They are able to keep these masks, this facade intact for most of the time. But there are instances, there are times when the mask slips and their real self comes to the surface. We're going to talk about such times in today's episode. Hi. I am Danesh, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. Today's episode is going to be all about learning five occasions when a narcissist mask falls and their real self comes to the surface. If that sounds interesting and if you want to learn more about this, make sure to subscribe to begin with because your subscription to this channel would help spread the awareness. Also, press the notification bell if you do not want to miss any updates. As always, out of my curiosity, I would like to begin with asking you a question. What was that one occasion, one instance when the narcissist who hurt you was exposed, when their mask fell off and you saw that real monstrous side? Let me know what your answers are in the comments below and help other survivors feel validated through your experiences. Let's get started with number one, when you need the narcissist the most. The narcissist abandons and neglects you when you are experiencing a crisis in your life. When there is an emergency and you need them to be there for you, you need them to offer you support, you need them to be cooperative, you need them to hold space for you, you need them to hold your hand for a while, you need them to offer care, affection, support, whatever it is possible from their side. What do they do? They leave you for the woes. They do not care what happens to you. They do not care about your needs. They just leave you expecting that you would meet your needs on your own and they're not expected to, neither are they obliged to play any role in your life because they are not connected with you. I'm going to give you an example of pregnancy. Just understand that the gender roles can be reversed, but this is just for the sake of explanation. You are heavily pregnant and it's your eighth or ninth month. You are expecting a baby soon. The doctor has prescribed a C-section because they think normal delivery is going to be complicated. So at this point, who do you depend on the most? Your partner. You want them to be there for you. You want them to assure you, reassure you that everything, everything is going to be okay and they would take care of the other things and you do not need to worry. You need them to accompany you when, when you go to the hospital. You need them to show up consistently. You of course need them to leave everything aside and be there because it is the time when you are going to experience one of the biggest shifts in your life and this is going to be complicated this is going to be tough for you at this point you would think that any partner any kind of partner would show up of course they would do except a narcissist in a grave situation like this the narcissist would not think twice before abandoning you and completely leaving you just in the hospital for the doctors to take care of and would not care who is there to support you, would not care about the baby, would not care about your health, would not care about the emergencies that might arise in a situation like this. They would be gone for weeks and only show up when you have delivered the baby, when everything is okay, when you do not need someone to take care of everything else that is going on. They would act as if they, there is no connection between them and the baby, there is no connection between them and you, and they would just show up for the sake of showing up at a time when they would not be needed. Think how cruel that is. You could also be experiencing a major shift. Another example of this could be the passing away of a loved one. Your parent just passed away and now you're shattered. You need someone to be there for you, to hold you because emotionally you're drowning. What does a narcissist do? Quite the opposite of offering you the emotional solace, the emotional space. They ridicule you, belittle you, humiliate you for feeling sad. They may say something along the lines of, what are you so sad about? These things happen to everybody every single day. Should we be crying now? They were already old. It was their time. Get yourself together. This apathy breaks you because your response, emotional response, is a normal reaction to a catastrophe like this. The event of someone passing away and it's expected that you would feel shattered. You would be in shock. They do not accompany you in your sadness. They do not show up at their funeral. Even if they do, they would make it about themselves and twist the whole situation to somehow bring the focus and place it on themselves. Number two, on the special occasions like your birthday 
or let's say family vacations. This uh, I think would not be new for you. If you have survived narcissistic abuse, I am 100% sure that you already know what I'm going to talk about. It's your birthday, you're happy, your heart is filled with joy, your friends are planning for you, the dinner is planned, everything is organized. Now, the only thing that you feel is excitement because many things are going to happen. It's your day. You're expecting a lot of people and many things, many things are in order. Instead of becoming a part of this whole plan, instead of becoming the part of this wonderful experience that you could have with the narcissist, they destroy it and they destroy it in ugly ways. The party is going on, the cake is about to be cut and the narcissist pretends to fall sick or they pretend to be having a panic attack. They need immediate assistance. They need you to drop everything and accompany them, take them to the room. Everything is now about them. Everybody is now asking about their health. Everybody is concerned how they're doing. And the real thing, the real joy, the real spirit of the occasion is killed, assassinated by their fakery. It is killed by their covert narcissism. In case you're dealing with an overt narcissist, they might bring up something months old and now are trying to hold you accountable. Why did you do that? Why did you say that? How could you do that? How could you be so happy and forget what you have done to me? How selfish are you for thinking about yourself only? And they would grind you, grind you in cycles and spirals until you have no soul, nothing left, no life left in you to think of the occasion itself. You don't want to do that anymore. You don't give a damn. You feel emotionally lost, dead and completely numb. You're not excited. There is no joy. There is no happiness. If there is anything, there is sadness, resentment, numbness, chaos and turbulence. Another example of this could be a family vacation and this used to happen a lot. Everything is planned. Everybody is ready. But the narcissist has to make it about themselves. They are the only ones who are not willing. No, I don't want to go. Why? This and that person is there. This person is going to be there and I hate them. I don't want them to be there. I can't stand them. Uh, I don't like going out. It's not for me. Uh, I just prefer sitting alone, being alone. I can't come. This is the reason and that is the reason. They make you beg. They make you beg for the bare minimum. And you say things like, if you come with us it's going to be an amazing event everybody is going to be together we're going to enjoy it please why can't you see that sometimes you have to do things for others you have to leave what you're feeling aside for a moment and think about your children and think about us this could be a wonderful experience one of those experiences with our family please and they make you beg and you keep begging and still nothing the joy and the spirit of the whole event is lost and in more, most of the cases victims choose not to go because they feel completely shattered and battered emotionally. Number three, behind the closed doors when no one is watching. I'm sure this is also not new for you. The narcissist doesn't need to put on a mask when they're with you within the four walls. They can be a monster and they become a monster without caring. This monster self is their real self. When they are with others, they are putting on this facade. They are wearing these different masks of normalcy. And you wonder, what is it that I am doing to make them behave that way? You are doing nothing. The way they are with you is who they actually are. It is just when they are with others, they have to keep put on these masks of normalcy to be more acceptable, to be more likable. But when they are with you, they see you as an object. They see you as a prey that has already been entrapped. They know that you are deeply entangled in the relationship and to untangle yourself, you would have to go through a lot of emotions which you would not do easily. So why bother wearing these masks? Let me treat you the way I want to treat you and I would not give a damn about how you feel. I'll be this monstrous, this callous version of myself to you because I do not see you more than a piece of furniture that just is lying around. Number four, when you do not follow the script in the timeline they have set for you. A narcissist simply wants obedience, complete compliance and subservience. They do not stand and cannot stand the fact that you have a voice or you have your capability to reason or you have a functioning intellect, your capability to use logic and think on your own. They can't stand that. When you are with them and when, it, when they ask you to do something, they want you to sacrifice all of that, put, put that, that aside and act as a robot that only knows one thing, which is 
to take orders and to fulfill them. You can't think about the logicality of what they are telling you. Even if it is apparent that their thinking, the way they are seeing things is purely illogical, makes no sense, is completely immature, still you do not stand a chance to say anything at all because what you say has no meaning, no value before what they are saying. What they are saying is the ultimate truth and so should you accept it. You can't think otherwise about it. When they assign a task to you, for example, if they want s some amount of money, they need it now and they need it as much as they want from you. They cannot stand excuses, which are basically reasons why you can't give the money to them. They don't care. They just need it now. They need sex. They need it now. No matter what you're going through, what's happening to your health, they need you to cook something. They need it now. And if you do not do it in the timeline and they become the monster and you see that ugly side to them that was hidden before they asked for this thing. Number five and the last one. This one is the most frustrating. When they are seen as a commoner or when they feel ignored. Narcissists think of themselves as these different entities who are special, who are above everyone else, especially those who are grandiose in their presentation. Therefore, they expect different kind of treatment from people. They can't stand in lines. They can't stand in queues. They have to be the first. No matter how for how long you have been waiting, if they arrive, you have to be put aside and their needs have to be the one that are first met. If you are in a restaurant and you are waiting, of course you would be waiting patiently for the food that you ordered. No, they need it now. And if they don't get it by the time and they don't get it first, they have a problem and they need to call the manager. That's why they hoard money. That's why they run after wealth because money enables their grandiose narcissism. If they have thousands and hundreds of dollars, what can they not do? They would be able to do a lot because in this world, the way it functions now, money makes things move. So they would get the best of the best doctor that is out there, the best of the best services available and they need it. They need it now. They cannot wait. They cannot stand getting this low life, low level service from just ordinary people, from those who are made for ordinary people because they can't associate themselves with this something that is so low, that is so ugly and beneath them. They need to be treated special. The moment you make them feel ignored or like a commoner, they will attack you. You will see the monstrous side coming out and how dare you do that? How can you be so stupid to see them as this other person? How can you see both of them equally when this person, the narcissist, is intellectually more developed, knows more, has more, does more? How can there be this comparison possible? You must be a fool for doing the comparison. In a nutshell, these people are monsters in the way they function and how they treat you, but they keep the, this monstrous side hidden, perfectly hidden behind the different masks that they wear, which is why it takes so much time for a person to recognize narcissism and the narcissistic self of this individual. I hope you found this episode insightful. If you did, please let me know in the comments and drop a like and ultimately share this episode with those who might need to see and watch this. I'll talk with you in the next one. Until then, let the healing begin.